Pam Cook and Kelly Rivers, Canton's Morning News. What? It's a great idea. Good morning, world. It's a brand new day. This is WHBC. All right, tax time. Right around the corner for crying out loud. And I know. Are you kind of crazy? Are you in possibility of the line of sight of the IRS that there may be an audit? Let's find out how we can maybe get away from that. Certified financial planner Kyle Walters joins us now. Good morning. Hey, good morning. All right, I don't want a tax audit. Are, are there like little red flags that I give the IRS that tells me I want one? Yeah, um, I don't think you're in the minority not wanting the tax audit. So um, <laughs> the, the biggest things to watch out for are you know, within your income range. There's going to be other people that make similar amounts of income as you do. Mm-hmm. So the IRS is going to look and they're going to say, okay, you know, how much money does Gary make? How much money do people similar to Gary make? And are you making charitable deductions, itemized deductions that are out of the range of those of those taxpayers that are going to be similar as far as income as you are? Do they use like little algorithms for this, or <laughs> I mean, I mean, how, how does that do this? Is it all automated? You put it in there, and then it goes, ooh, whoa, that's out of whack. Yeah, that, that's a great question. So this is, you know, what most people don't know is the IRS, all those 1099 W2s, every single piece that you get in, is really important that you turn it in with your tax return. Even if you want to dispute it and you don't agree with it, you need to turn it in because the IRS gets copies of all that and then cross-references and matches all those forms. So if there's something that you get and you don't report it, they're going to know about it. Yeah. All right, so what kind of, you know, when you're filling out your taxes, what kinds of things do you, should you be especially careful with? Yeah, Pam, so when you're going through, you, one, make sure that you have records for all these items, right? So if you're doing charitable contributions that are over, you know, over $250, if you're, you know, any of these items, make sure you have solid records and receipts for these. Super important. Um, home office deduction, right? There's a couple of ways that you can calculate the home office deduction. Make sure you know what you're doing there. Um, make sure that you can substantiate those claims. And just in general, make sure you're saying, okay, I want to, pay as little as taxes as possible, but be totally honest along the way. And if I do get audited, I have the receipts and the proof to back it up. All right. Is, is it easier or smarter sometimes? Like, uh, I know on gas and mileage for some people, it's better just to take a standard deduction the IRS allows you than try to keep all those records that you may not have, right? Yeah, you know, depending whether you're doing something like home office, which has a, an easier option and a more complicated option, also your auto, really you've got to determine, and this is this is kind of a, a person-to-person issue, is does it make more financial sense for me to do the more complex option, and is it worth the, the paperwork headache to do it? So for some people that have a tax professional handling it all for them, it's not as much of an issue. For those that are doing it themselves, you say, hey, I may save a couple extra dollars doing this, but can I really keep track of it and do it right? That's a whole other question. Yeah, so say your name is Gary Rivers and you take really lousy record keeping. <laughs> uh, probably better off just to press the simplified version, right? Uh, you know, that that could be a good option. You don't want to send in a lot of um, ish numbers. You know, well, 10,000 ish miles, that can get you in trouble. So unless you're really great at keeping these records, uh, or you have somebody that's really great at keeping these records, uh, the simplified option could keep you out of some trouble. You know, sometimes I think when I talk to uh, financial planners and tax guys, it seems like, you know, I don't want to say I, I feel like I'm just, you know, tossing a dart at a at a at a at a target on the wall there. But it seems like there's a there's a little leeway that's in between the IRS, and and you just have to know what that leeway is if you're taking a guess at something, right? Am am I asking you a question that could get you in trouble, so you're not going to answer me? <laughs> Well, you know, anytime, anytime that is the question, does the IRS give a lot of leeway? Um, I would say probably not. Uh, you know, the the answers that you may be getting uh, just when you're talking can be very different from those that they'll write down. In other words, um, the IRS has pretty strict guidelines on this, so make sure that you know you you know if you're try- if you think you're getting into the gray area, make sure you know how you're going to back up your claim um, because. You know, your chances of getting audited are pretty low in general, but, you know, if you're a taxpayer over, you know, a few decades, right, that chance gets pretty high of eventually being audited, and you want to be able to say, okay, um, you know, if they start finding discrepancies, there's a possibility they could look at even more years. So the gray area can definitely get people in trouble. It's better to stay on the straight and narrow. The tax code is pretty clear on these issues. All right, just one more question before we, we leave. 
Is it really as scary as I believe it may be <laughs> to be audited, or is it just a nice conversation, a couple of guys sitting across from each other drinking coffee and going over numbers? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, you know when clients hear, about, hear the word audit, I think that's probably the most horrifying word in the English dictionary. I think people envision, um, you know, IRS agents in black suits were telling down their house and kicking in the door and, you know, kidnapping them and, you know, Typically, that's not how it happens. Um, they usually just send you some correspondence in the mail, say, hey, we want these documents, please send them. Lots of times, you don't owe any additional money to the IRS. Sometimes you get a refund. So it's not as, um, it's not as painful as, as it sounds, and it's not as painful as you know, many people make it out to believe. It's just one of those things that if, you got, if you're organized, if you've got the records, it can be resolved pretty quickly. All right. Thank you so much. We've been talking with Kyle Walters, Certified Financial Planner. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.